Cool, so let's go ahead and do a quick overview of this tool. So the company name is Marbleism. The founder name is Ulrich Muset, and the revenue they're generating is 20,000 a month. And this is what the front page of their website looks like, and this is their website domain. Cool, so let's break down their system here. Let me bring everything a little closer. Boom, cool, so we have the elements and the sub-elements here. Starting with the elements, Number one, specialized AI agents, and the purpose of this element is to perform specific business functions autonomously. Number two, technical implementation. It is to deliver high quality AI capabilities with cost efficiency. Number three, revenue structure. It is to generate sustainable income while encouraging adoption. Number four, investment framework. It is to fund development and provide runway for pivots. Number five, customer targeting. It is to focus on segments with highest adoption potential. Number six, marketing channels. It is to acquire users cost effectively. Number seven, adaptation and evolution. It is to respond to market feedback and usage patterns. Number eight, future development. It is to expand capabilities and maintain market leadership. Now, these are the sub-elements for each element here. Starting with number one for specialized AI agents, it is executive assistant, which contains email management and response drafting. Then we have social media manager, which consists of content creation and ghostwriting. Then we have SEO blog writer, which has article generation and website content. Then we have sales assistant, which is lead generation automation. Then we have former AI engineer, which is full stack application building. Number two, for technical implementation, customized fine-tuned LLMs for specific tasks. Then token optimization systems, React frontend, Node.js backend, AWS hosting infrastructure, and reverse prompting user interface. Number three for revenue structure, package-based pricing, all AI employees included. Previous model with 250,000 annual recurring revenue achievement, then current reset after pivot, building back towards previous revenue, and then goal of 1 million annual recurring revenue by year end, and cost efficient margins through optimization. Number four for investment framework, four million funding round, Y Combinator backing, previous exit credibility for Vobin to Carta, capital allocation for product transformation, and runway management during pivots. Number five for customer targeting, small business owners currently uh, current primary market, then we have non-technical users, previously developers, <clears throat> previously are developers with their initial target, emphasis on accessible AI technology, and focus on practical business applications. Then we have number six, marketing channels, word of mouth referrals, SEO content strategy, meta advertising platform, previously attempted Twitter cold outreach, paid keywords, and user education content. Then we have number seven for adaptation and evolution. Pivot from AI engineer to AI employees. User behavior analysis. Problem identification, which consists of non-technical users struggling with bugs. Three month transformation period and continuous refinement based on feedback. Number eight for feature development. Collaborative multi-agent teams inter-agent communication systems, task delegation between agents, AI employee roster expansion, and industry expectation management. Cool, so we just broke down the system there. Now we're going to go over the value proposition, AKA the overall purpose of the, their entire operation, and then we're going to point out the constraint and then solve for that constraint. So let's get into it. The value proposition. It is to de democratize access to AI business assistance by providing non-technical small business owners with a team of specialized AI employees who can autonomously handle essential business functions. 
from administrative tasks to content creation to sales without requiring coding skills, technical expertise, or the expense of human employees. All right, now here is the constraint in their operation. User expectation, management, and an overhyped AI market. It directly impacts user satisfaction, retention, and long-term growth. While they've successfully pivoted their product offering to better match market needs, bridging the gap between what users expect from AI based on media hype and what current AI technology can actually deliver remains their central challenge. So what does this mean? Inputs aren't always linear. AI has advanced well beyond expectations, but just like human workers, they need to be trained with knowledge. This means users should be more focused on information acquisition to feed AI with proprietary data over instant automation with AI agents. So we know the focus and we know what it means, but how do we solve this problem? Set realistic expectations for the service instead of trying to serve the entire market with AI agents. Focusing on marketing to users who have a humanized system already ongoing will lead to result market fit for ideal customers. Now you may ask, why would a humanized system be required initially? AI is an efficiency solution, not an intelligence solution. A good operation is one that has resilience. It's better to face obstacles with humans instead of facing obstacles with robots. The reason for this is because humans are natural adapters. In order to develop an SOP, standard operating procedure, you have to split test different procedures. When you find the winning procedures, you, you accelerate it. After you accelerate it, you can now automate it with AI. So I hope you guys found this valuable. If you did and you want to see more of me on your home feed, hit that subscribe button. Take care.